Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, E75 TS. I noticed that this tank was available for purchase currently inside the game. There's five days left on this. Uh, now, one thing I want to go over. Please note that this bundle can only be claimed one time per account. Sorry, I read that one over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what you're getting with the E75 TS. Strong turret armor provides excellent protection when hauled down. Good mobility for a heavy tank. Um... Sure, I guess. Now, let's give you an idea. See this lobe? Right there, that little lobe, at the very top. That's a weak spot. If we were to jump in and take a look at the armor model of this tank, you'd be a little bit surprised. Right here on the 60 millimeter spot, uh, this is actually just considered spaced armor. There is no actual armor behind this. You guys can look at it for yourself inside the armor viewer. Uh, along with that, on the rear, you do have this as an armor model as a legitimate armor model with no armor behind it. So you got 50 millimeters, 40 millimeters actually, so there's going to be some high explosives that can clip this. And as you can see, 80 millimeters and the armor is not connected to this. So you do have a big fat 50 millimeter weak spot right on your butt. And uh, speaking of which, I wonder what modules are inside there. Oh, well, you look at that. It's a fuel tank that's sitting inside there. So yeah, that's, um, if anyone gets behind you, you're going to be on fire quite a few times. Now, I have mentioned this on the channel before. I've talked about the difference between uh, 360 alpha damage compared to like 440 or even 390. Uh, currently, the E75TS, my version has a 9.85 second reload, while my 259A has a 10.03 second reload. You see how much of a difference there is there? What is that, 0.17 seconds of a difference? Um, for a alpha damage difference of 60. Because this has got a 420 alpha, and the other has a 360. And if you were to go over and look at any of the other tanks inside the lineup, even compared to, like, let's say, uh, Japanese or some others, you're going to notice that this effect kind of goes down across the board. Now, to give you a little bit of a rundown, what I want to talk about today is this. I am rank 14 out of 538 players for the E75 TS. I maintain a 54.59% win rate with 218 battles. Above that, you see the Ferdinand with a 61% win rate with 112 battles. So you do see a little bit of a win rate difference here. But now we're going to scroll down to the Roger Dodger. I'm ranked 22 out of 1,600 people that played this tank, averaging a 55% win rate with 132 matches played inside the tank. Now... I enjoy the E75TS to the fullest. I think that this is a great tank. However, it is a tank that needs a little bit of love. This thing needs a better reload. I use, um, on my commander on this tank, I run Last Stand. And every single time this kicks in, I feel like the reload is just at that perfect spot right where you want it. Around 8.7 to 8.3 seconds. And once you're right there, that's whenever this tank actually starts to feel good. But unfortunately, you struggle to trade with people because they're going to be able to pop you for an additional 30 damage per shot. Or they're going to get a way bigger high roll with you. And... You know, some people are going to stop and say it's like, but you have really good premium penetration at 282. You have really good um, premium shell velocity, 1375, uh, 1100 on the standard um, rounds. So this is AP and APCR. But then if you say it that way, then why does the T34 have a 10 second reload with 400 alpha and 248 standard pin? And then what is it, 298 premium? You know, I just realized that I don't even have a gun rammer on this tank. And my reload is 10.27. I'm going to quickly swap out my vertical stabilizer for a gun rammer, and we're going to see what it gets down to. Gun rammer installed. 9.24 second reload. And suddenly, a 400 alpha gun is reloading faster than a 360 alpha gun with far much more penetration and possibly the same play style whenever it comes down to haul down capability uh, between both the tanks. All right, before I continue on, I have a serious question. Does anyone ever use advanced suspension? Track durability plus 50%, damage from environmental collision minus 50% over advanced repair system. Personally, I prefer advanced repair system all day because there's some tanks, your hit points are so low on your tracks that even with this on it, for instance, like the IS, um, you're still going to be getting tracked. You're better off with repairs. 
I still don't know why this is a thing. If they were to change the environmental collisions over to like additional track repair, um, then this would be, uh, I would consider using this, especially whenever the tracks are repaired, that they're repaired at full health, then this equipment would be worthwhile. And for a final touch-up, I want to talk about the modules inside this tank. The Amorak location inside this, um, I actually find that I rarely ever get Amorak'd because I'm always facing my opponent's head on, and if I let them on my sides, it's kind of my fault if I get Amorak'd inside this tank. So, it is a bit uh, user-friendly in that way. You know, there's also one more thing that they should add in-game. I would love to see track hit points whenever I look over inside Module Viewer and take a look at this. Because your tracks do have a set amount of hit points depending on their size. For instance, like the mouse has got really strong tracks. E75TS, this thing has actually got some pretty decently strong tracks. So if you wanted to take a toolbox, you technically can. Um, more than likely for the gameplay I'm going to be doing today, I might swap, to, um, swap out my vertical stabilizer for a toolbox. So enough rambling like I am. I'm just going to change everything up and let's get to this. And there's a toolbox. Anyways, let's jump into some gameplay of this tank. I actually love this thing. And it, it kind of saddens me um, for the state that it's in currently. And talk about a first match. Right away getting put up against tier 10s. I don't mind this, you know, like um, the way matchmaking works. If you guys didn't know this, I've, I've shared this a couple of times, but I enjoy sharing it each time it comes to mind because it's something that needs to be known. If you play the same tier, specifically the same tier, and you need to complete the matches fully, your third game is guaranteed to be in your favor. That means you're either going to be mid-tier or top-tier. Uh, for instance, if I, if I die in this match, and then I play another match, and then I die in that match, and then I play another match, that third match will only be the good match if both the other matches have ended. If you continue just to be aggressive and try to push, 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 um then it's actually going to be playing against you because the three matches actually never get to reset properly because you're jumping into a game. So it counts your third match as being a game you're already currently in and it messes everything up. So you need to make sure that you play a match, let it complete, and then play another, and then let it complete. And as I'm rambling on, I am in a lot of trouble right here because I just uh, full-on big-brained it into... Um, the literal front row in tier 10 matchmaking, and I am all by my lonesome. Yeah, I do this way too much. I need to stop. Oh, hi, Strum. Hi, Turan. Don't you guys love Turans? Well, I guess that's one way to get a thousand spot assist. I'm just gonna quickly invest another match real fast, and hopefully the third game is the good game. Never mind, this might be the good game. Anyways, it feels like I spoke a little bit too soon about the ammo rack, because, I mean, my, my top did get popped, but then again, it got popped by one of the most overpowered tanks in the game, known as the Turan. So, I guess that is what it is. It's just kind of um, how it goes. Anyways, another tier 10 matchmaking. It looks like I uh, had my one good game inside that uh, tier 8, which was an alright game. I took a spot and no one really came over. I, I shot a P44 Pantera and a AT-15. That was pretty much about it. So, talking about the E75TS, this is a tank that I actually went over to PC to try out. Because um, a lot of the replays I've seen in this tank were all on PC, you know, like, I, I haven't really seen a whole lot of console creators cover this tank. And I know why. It's kind of subpar in a lot of ways, yet I'm also a, a person that's actually known for playing a lot of subpar tanks and playing tanks that are completely underrated and being an enjoyer of something really bad. For instance, the Tier 7 Derp Gun, the AVRE at Tier 7. Um, I've surprisingly been enjoying that thing, and it's definitely not a good tank. But depending on the matchmaking, you're always capable of like knowing when you're going to have a decent game or not. Uh, there, I wonder... I don't see any trees knocked down back there, so I don't know if I'll be able to take any blind shots. But I am spotted by a QL. And we're going to want to back off. Because we're going to ask next to us. I wonder if the QL wants to push up because he just sees me and he doesn't know that I have an ally. I have a friend. He's a very good friend. What is nice, though, is you can bait with this front plate and the lower plate with the way it's designed. It's not a pike nose, so you are able to pull with it. Maxing out your gun depression as well on this is really nice because against AP and APCR, your uh, top plate, whenever you have maximum gun depression does um, enter auto ricochet. So as long as you're using maximum gun depression, your top plate's strong. 
but it doesn't mean that this tank is a, a win-all beat-all. Because the moment that you're going against um, any heat round, your armor starts to really fall off. And especially against tier 10, there is no auto ricochet against tier 10, so on your top plate. Well, I could be wrong about that, actually. I'm going to have to double check. Can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but a little bit of 560 ricochet and a shot into his hatch. What is nice about this gun, though, is just how responsive it can be. But that rate of fire is what really takes away from this thing. Just because you're stuck with 360 alpha with a 9.8 second reload. Sure, you can bolster it up and you can get it to be a lot better, but that requires you to um, use a premium consumable to be able to do so. And it's a little bit unfortunate, like the 320 alpha category and the 300 alpha category outmatch this thing tenfold. Also, whenever you're not firing and you're poking a corner, make sure you always maintain a slight angle against the opponent, making it a lot harder to penetrate that turret. If you're going straight on, your gun mantle's a little bit weak, but at this angle right here, yep, that heat round is going to struggle to do anything. However, the 780 straight into the lower plate wasn't exactly a good enough angle. A little bit surprised that he uh, managed to catch that out. And here I am, firing standard rounds against tier 10s. Ah, uh, but this is how it goes. You want to give me the side of the turret? I will take the side of the turret. So far, I mean, don't get me wrong. Good turret is definitely not a lie, but rate of fire and all-round comfort of this tank pretty much, like, is um, non-existent. And he's going to want to shoot me again. Yeah, he wants to shoot the tier 8. It's kind of funny, because the IS-4 is full health. And, well, scratch that. I was also healthy, so I was freebie damage for him. That was kind of his goal. He's probably working on his 3 mark, because he's got 2 right there. At least I think I saw 2. I could be wrong. E3 from this distance. Ooh, give me your side. I will definitely take your side. Now, I kind of feel like I have a curse inside this tank. I was telling Deathstroke about this, and he kind of giggled at me, and then he watched me play inside this. Sure, I'm rank 17 and rank 20 in the world, and well, rank 4, was it 14 or 17? I can't remember off the top of my head. And I just looked at it too, that tells you how much I'm paying attention. But, I feel like I'm cursed. I can never break 3,000 damage consistently inside this tank. Just because that reload is such a hindrance. Let's say, like, if you took the 360 and gave it 390, you know, and then it's like, I can never go past 3,000 damage, and then you add their alpha on top, that's an average of like 3,400. You know, and that would be the consistency across the border, 3,300, 3,400. You know, because of the way the rounds are always going to be topping off one another. So for me, I kind of feel like I always end up in a really weird situation inside this tank. Just because of the way the tank is designed. So for instance, the way the armor on this tank is... I, I find myself to end up in very strange scenarios just because I'll be pulling in somewhere. And then I'll get lined up and ready to take a shot and do a couple of things. Maxed out gun depression, coming down. Um, it's not auto ricochet, but it's 250 millimeters of effective armor. So even at maximum gun depression, you always want to make sure that whenever you're facing an enemy, you come in at a slight angle to be able to enter that auto ricochet in the top plate. There is a real sweet spot on this thing. That is a little bit easy to kind of hit, but you always approach at a slight angle to be able to come in and get that nice auto ricochet. But then against, let's say, like um, 270 heat, honestly, we can pull out any heat round and you'll just be able to see the penetration value. So yeah, 340, uh, sides of the turret here, as you can see, uh, easy pin. Uh, those are the weak spots coming up top. They can even sometimes go through this and just full pin straight into your hatch, which is 100 and 160. I don't think console is 160. I think console is a little, little bit off compared to that. But maximum gun depression, your top plate against um, 340 heat pin, it's just going to tear through. So if you're straight on ever inside this tank, that top plate, 300, 310, Lower plate, I mean 160 millimeters lower plate, but that top plate's 300 millimeters effective up in the front. So you just want to make sure that you're coming in a slight angle to help give you that uh, better absorption chance rather than coming straight on and just getting overpinned the entire time. Even using 3 degrees of gun depression, the effective armor against heat rounds is 280. And then against AP, it's an effective 
uh, 237 millimeters. So against like um, some tanks, you can effectively bounce off this front plate, depending on what you're going up against. So that's a three degrees of gun depression facing the opponent from like, I don't know, 50 meters or so. But I've just, after playing in PC and playing with the reload in there, that was at eight seconds, and then coming back to console to play on console to play my E75TS, I kind of felt like the entire time I would, I just, I always felt like the situations I could end up in on PC compared to console was I could be a little bit more aggressive in PC because I had that reload to be aggressive. You know, the eight, the 8.3 second reload I had over in PC compared to the 9.8 second reload, 9.9 .9 second reload that I have over here because we're just going to round it off for the fun of it because they love to round it off too. Now, it, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a little bit sad to see that this was the outcome for this tank. And that's a Storm Tiger P. Yeah, just the outcome for this tank and the way that it's been set up. Uh, is he going to HE? Yeah, he's going to HE. And 85 millimeter plate. That actually might be a 115. It's kind of funny how I talked about the ammo rack being reliable. And um, here I am getting uh, ammo racked and messed up. But as you can see, it's like you get into those positions and immediately I'm already down to 400 hit points. Um... I mean, don't get me wrong, I did kind of play a little bit aggressive right there. Not exactly in the greatest set to be able to play right now, but hey, I'm here and I'm doing it. Uh, but it's just the average that I maintain inside this tank that makes it perform. Uh, until I play like a complete and utter Muppet because I've been busy all day and I'm a complete Muppet. The biggest one you've probably seen in a minute. But it's okay. This Muppet likes to play aggressive, and I don't hesitate to play aggressive if I gotta play aggressive. Alright, the 416 did hit me with a heat round, so... Okay, 0 0.31 accuracy, 0 0.44 during turret rotation. Wait, 0.44 is no longer a thing, because we put the uh, vertical stabilizer off and create it off for toolbox. Kind of hoping he just shoots me in the... Uh... Actually, you know what? We're gonna take a hit. He's actually gonna miss that hit. I do want to take a hit from the low, though. I want to take one more hit, because then last stand's going to kick in, and then I'm going to show you the comfort of the reload. Am I not giving you a good enough shot? What's up with the... What's going on here? Oh, thank you. There we go. Now that we're below 10% hit points, now you're going to be seeing a little bit of a difference here inside the reload. And that's the VK on the right side. That's a tad bit of lag. But now, we're going to hit the premium consumable along with the reload bonus here. You can see the way that gun works now. As well. We want to be a little bit careful though, because the under armor on this is only 40mm, so that VK can overmatch the um, under armor above the tracks. So we do want to be a little bit careful on that. But this is something that I do. So now that I'm low health... And now you're able to see this reload with um, Last Stand engaged. With my 95 hit points in a dream. Hello IS, how are you? Please bounce, thank you. 416's probably loading heat. That was actually... Yeah, that was heat. Because, um... I'm gonna take a look at the top plate there. He hit the top armor, and that would have been auto ricochet, but since it's 40 millimeters... And what does the 416 have for pin? Yep, 330 millimeters of heat pin right through that armor. You know what's wrong whenever you see a tier 6, like, making everyone look bad? <laughs> I, I, I wish I was recording the very end of that match there, because he just drove circles around a T-28. So, this tank, I, I do enjoy it. The E-75TS, it's a solid tank, but against heat rounds, it's going to struggle. Um, the reload of this tank, I, I just... You notice, like, once I took last stand and I let last stand kick in the last match, that the gun actually seemed to be a little bit better. Because it was. It was a thousand times better. That reload advantage, whenever last stand kicked in, is kind of like where it should be right now. I'm not talking, like, entirely fully right now. I mean, maybe like an 8.5, 8.6 second reload is what this tank should be actually sitting at rather than 9.8. And I mean, that's using premium consumables. Could you imagine being a free-to-play player 
and you're not using rations and you're not using anything to really bolster your uh, rate of fire and you're stuck with like a 10.2 second reload and you have 400 alpha guns out reloading you and they deal more damage and you only get to hit them for 360 now sure 360 damage is not like a, it, it's not a damage to laugh at per se it's just that the way that this was um, designed and the way that it was left in game this tank was brought in before update 6.0 and then whenever update 6.0 hit this tank was a beast before 6.0 but the moment 6.0 dropped this thing went from being this actually really competitive heavy turret able to pin people down and tear them apart it turned into a, a little bit of a laughing stock in all honesty and I love how I talk about the Amorak being reliable on this and then everyone's snapshotting the Amorak now that's not normally how this thing goes. It's usually really nice. And I mean, you gotta remember, like I said, it's my fault if I get ammo racked because I should be taking them on frontally. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to that. It's definitely my fault. Uh, what is that, a Penzi Jaeger? I love that those... Did those get sold again? Seriously, I'm just asking. You know, and there we go, 780 blocked. Um, that was uh, from the E50M because now he's loading the heat rounds. But as long as we maintain that decent angle, we should be okay. And that's a strum feeples. It's time for me to run. You see, the armor holds up really good as long as you're maintaining a good angle. If you're not maintaining a good angle, you're just not gonna... Okay, you're not gonna be able to block a whole lot. Uh, never mind, that was the strum tiger shot. How much did you get hit for? I just saw the bat chat pull out in front of me and I was kind of sitting there holding my breath like am I gonna get splashed with you and you're gonna die um that strum did not aim too well I mean he was probably aiming decent just oh I looked away and I mean matchmaking today has not been kind to me this is what the third tier 10 game fourth tier 10 game third tier 10 game I think I think it's the third just for today yeah, and I also did put myself in a pretty bad position. Ah, uh, 700... Yeah, 780. Uncomfortable. I love the ice. I love how I slide. Nice. See, and I hit for 377, and his 390 hit for 400. And thing is, just look at this reload. Absolutely atrocious. And straight through the top plate with his uh, APCR instead of the 1390. Is he out of ammo? I'm gonna get 780. You wanna know what today feels like? Today feels like the day I should have not logged on. <laughs> uh, I'm up against more tier 10s. I mean, it's not like a, a super overwhelming tier 10 match where I have um, three AFK players at the back of the base. And uh, I'm not going to be calling out any gamer tags because there's, there's just no point to. Never has been. They look more Terence. Anyways, you know, like, it's not a bad tank. It's a very niche tank. And it would be much better if it had a better reload. And that's pretty much all it is. This thing needs a little bit of love. You know, like, I'm not asking you guys to take the armor and take this 120mm top plate and make it over 500mm effective. I'm, I just want to have a gun that actually fills reliable on this tank because for the tier that's in and the amount of tier 8s that I play and tier 8 is my main tier I find this tank to just be niche and for a niche tank I've put over what is it 370 matches inside the variant of the tank and don't get me wrong I, I used to enjoy it but then I started to switch up and play around a little bit and then I realized how much this thing is actually lacking in so many ways and maybe that's why I did enjoy to play it, because it was lacking in so many ways that I enjoy tanks that simply underperform, like the T95 Chieftain. And I'm talking not the Tier 10 variant, I'm talking the Tier 8 variant with the once upon a time, like 192 pin, 238 premium pin. And then they buffed it, the pin, which actually made it really good. But it still has a hatch the size of Mount Everest that you got to deal with. So I, I guess there is that. And also the fact that I'm pressing X to immediately jump into a game immediately after, which means that I'm going against the same light tank players and TD players and 
everybody. And I'm stuck in the open now, but at least I have a toolbox to get everything back up and running. I gotta say, toolboxes, like, it's underrated how effective toolboxes are for brawling tanks. Now, it does have good top speed, 45, 16 power to weight, a really good traverse, reverse speed at 17. I, <laughs> I forgot it was, but I knew it was a good reverse speed. But I've always found myself in this tank to struggle a tad bit just because of the way it's designed and immediately losing a tremendous amount of health all in the lower plate at the exact same time. I need to stop doing this. I really do. Over angling the armor, you would you would think that you're at a comfortable angle, but I actually have no idea what hit me because the audio was all mixed. The Shaska hits me, if the Strum Tiger hits me, I'm just dead now. Not just that, like, all these tanks have got 1,500 hit points, and then there's so much high alpha in game. And people talk about a high alpha meta. Um, as of recent, I, I want to say I don't believe in the high alpha meta. I believe more in the reload meta more than I do the high alpha meta. Just because if you have a fast enough reload, you can lock people down and not even care. You're capable of catching somebody out and locking them down where they don't have gun depression on you. And if they've already wasted a repair kit, because you forced them to waste a repair kit, then you're capable of just absolutely punishing them. Anyways, I think I need to slow down on talking and actually focus on the match here. It's not like I haven't been. I've just been get hit by Ghost of Sparta. Ah, Ghost of Sparta! Why is it that no one was scouting out the midsection? Then again, when do people scout out the midsection on airfield? Anyways, you guys, um, I'm, I'm going to call it on this. The E75TS, once upon a time, this was a tank that was a go-to for me. But as time has gone on, I have slowly grown out of this tank. I used to enjoy it a lot because it used to be this absolutely monster of a tank with the way the maps were and everything else, but with... The consistency for like um, tier 10s and then tier 8 and like no middle ground in between or whenever you're bottom tier inside this tank, there's only one way to play it. And it's unfortunate to that that's kind of how I look at the E75 TS. You're forced to go haul down. You can't really use this armor to ever play aggressive inside this tank. You're always going to be forced to find yourself stuck in the background, sniping inward and hoping that your shells land. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed seeing my extremely below average gameplay for the day. Um, but I mean, this this says I'm just like the rest of you guys that I'm there's moments I underperform. And I mean, don't get me wrong. This this thing is a monstrous tank. I, I appreciate this thing so much. It has an emblem that I paid money for. It has a one-of-a-kind knight emblem that you had to earn to obtain it, and I don't have any more copies of this because it was the only time I could put it on. Same thing about Delta, but I don't think Delta's actually... Uh, I think you can actually buy that now that I think about it. But Team Tigers was another one that I had to pay for to be able to put it on this tank. And originally, I did want to put the Team Tiger skin on it, but I unfortunately ran out of them during the time that I wanted to put it on it because this is a tank that... It's earned my respect for how it is. And once I tried to go for the three mark on this is whenever I started to really struggle because I don't like to snipe all game. I like to get in and brawl. I like to try and use this thing's armor to its fullest. But unfortunately, with the way the map design is on the game right now, I'm unable to utilize this 120 millimeter top plate or the 80 millimeter side armor. And then the uh, ever-increasing um, side skirt armor there. So you can see it hits uh, 150, 140, and it slowly just decreases until you hit the rear of it, which is just a half cutoff of 80 millimeters. But this tank, unfortunately, I would say if, if you want to specialize into it and you want to play it, it's not a bad tank. But you're going to be finding yourself in the situations that you saw me in today. Anyways, you guys, thanks for tuning in. You know, thanks for sitting around. Uh, leave a like in the video, leave a comment, subscribe. And if you guys want to really help out the channel, consider consider becoming a member. Um, I'm looking to get back into YouTube and doing it a whole lot more. And honestly, if I had some more incentive to want to be able to do it, 
uh, membership would help quite a bit just so I can be able to upgrade and keep my equipment fresh. Uh, anyways, till next time, I hope you guys don't laugh at me too much for how the gameplay went today. And I'll catch you in the next one.